Believe it or not, in the ancient world, the largest percentage of adult singles was actually prostitutes. Dating is actually a more modern invention of 20th century America, uh, made possible by Henry Ford and his invention of the automobile that allowed people to actually go out. Prior to this point, uh, couples just sort of awkwardly sat in their parents' parlor rooms. And since this dating phenomenon thing is relatively new in the, in the history of mankind, Christians uh, need to be able to navigate that new landscape using some important biblical principles. So let me give you two here today uh, for a couple ideas. Number one, maybe avoid deep emotional relationships with non-believers. This uh, is sometimes a controversial point um, amongst Christians, but it doesn't really have to be because the Bible is pretty consistent throughout on it. In 1 Corinthians 7, the Apostle Paul says, A woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she's free to marry anyone she wishes, but he must belong to the Lord. Other passages in Scripture bring this idea home too. In, in 2 Corinthians 6.14, Paul talks about not being unequally yoked with somebody else. And what he means by that is don't get so close with somebody else that can't carry their own spiritual weight because otherwise they're going to hold you back in your relationship with Christ. And God's basic point is this, the people closest to us in life have the greatest influence over us. And if you open your heart to somebody that doesn't have the Holy Spirit in theirs, it can at the very least be pretty spiritually confusing for us. One other idea, allow yourself input from honest, loving Christians. Prior to the 20th century dating phenomenon, it was just assumed that Christians in the courtship process would have friends and relatives get a lot of influence uh, over who their spouse would be. Christianity was a communal experience and, and Christian marriage was also kind of a communal exercise. You would bring people by your, your relatives and family and they would comment on whether or not this person would be a blessing to you and help you in your walk with Christ. Furthermore, if, if Christians live communally, a lot of our relational needs are met and there isn't this longing to just have someone, anyone, be there along the way. This might be the most challenging part in, in American history to live as a Christian, especially as a Christian single, but you're not doing it alone. Jesus promises he will be with you. He promises to never leave you. And he promises that he created this huge thing called the church to love and support and encourage you along the way. Plug into that community and you're guaranteed to make wiser relationship choices. For those of you that are married, uh, be sure to comment below for us to let us know how your Christian spouse has been a blessing to you. Come back and join us again tomorrow.